In today's show, we recap all of the wild and crazy action from Sunday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So much stuff to talk about. So many COVID protocols and guys coming out of COVID protocols and news announcements. We had a waiver wire show earlier today where I discussed the Paul George injury. We'll go over that a little bit more when we recap the Clippers game later in the day as well. But let's hit into some other news and a bunch of blokes who, since I last recorded the what to watch for slash waiver wire shows earlier today, all of these players have entered into COVID protocols. Most recently, Yusuf Nurkic, along with Cody Zeller in Portland, Naz Reed in Minnesota, Although some good news there, Patrick Beverly and Josh Okoge are, are out of protocols. Um, Jay Crowder in Phoenix is in protocols, so Cam Johnson, you can fire him up. In um, Charlotte, Miles Bridges and PJ Washington. Cody Martin still in protocols there, so Ubre gets a bump. Mason Plumley gets a bump. Jalen McDaniels gets a bump there as well as a good option. Draymond Green in Golden State joins, joins Poole and Wiggins as being out. So Otto Porter, a real significant boost in value. Kaminga. Toscano Anderson could even have some stream value. In Memphis, Melton and Brooks both out. We saw Johnny Conchar jump up today with some good numbers. We'll talk about that later. Him and Kyle Anderson have some real value as even 12-team league options. And of course, that really solidifies what Desmond Bain is doing. But just so many guys in and out. Then we have Don Mitchell on top of that, out with a back injury for at least the next two games, meaning Joe Ingles becomes a stream option. I mentioned that Patrick Beverly is returning. He's questionable and out of protocols. And Marcus Morris, also out of protocols. So I guess some decent news there in that those guys can return. Beverly and Morris should be grabbed if they're available. We also had Damian Lillard listed as questionable for personal reasons. So we don't know where he's going to be in tomorrow's game. And they're already without Covington, who's in protocols, and Nurkic. And we're going to have massive, massive opportunity. And CJ McCollum's out, of course. And so Larry Nance, um, Simons, and Little, who is off the injury report, are going to have big opportunities for a, a lot of really, really big games. Lonzo Ball went into protocols earlier today. I think we talked about that on one of the earlier shows. DeJounte Murray, another one there. But Kevin Porter Jr. is getting closer to return in some better news. I I guess it's better news, considering how bad he's been playing. Um, Hal Neto went into COVID protocols. DJ Augustin went into them. Darius Baisley went in there. Rajon Rondo. Um, John Collins, the Baptist. Alfonso McKinney, Jalen Johnson. Corey Joseph and Josh Jackson in Detroit. Just so many players um, jumping into COVID protocols. Chumra Kiki, but that's one we touched on earlier today. And uh, the Discman, Chetty Osman, also in the COVID protocols. Just, again, so many players. Um, players coming in, players coming out. It's obviously a, a tough time in the NBA, but we're here to try and make it a little bit more enjoyable and, and keep some uh, momentum going through the fantasy basketball season. All right, so let's... Let's have a look at what the first game of the day was. It was an early one, the Orlando Magic. They took on the Miami Heat. They weren't able to uh, to get the victory in the end. But we still got some interesting performances in this game. On the Magic side of things, there was no Bumba, no Cole Anthony managing that ankle injury again, which is a concern. Okiki, Suggs, Isaac, Ross, Fultz, Mulder, um, BJ Johnson, Iggy Brasdakis, Carter Williams, Moore, and Mo Wagner were all out. They started a lineup of Hassani Gravit, Gary Harris, Franz Wagner, Admiral Schofield, and Wendell Carter Jr. Let's start with Gary Harris. Nice, Gary! Another nice game from Gary. Only 23 um, fantasy points, but he's the 77th ranked player over the last two weeks. He had 20 points with two threes. Not much else there. Very Jordan Clarkson, but he shot well, and he's playing well. And while everyone's out, he is an ad. It was a solid game from Gravit as well. 12 and 5, three threes, two steals, and a block. Nice across the board production. If Cole Anthony continues to be managed, which I don't know know that he will, but if he does, 
then yeah, Gravit has some options. But Bumba and Anthony and maybe Ross, they could all return as early as next game. Wendell had 8-14, and 14, while Roderick Hampton, 14 points, 5 assists, 2 steals, and a block for RJ. That's not bad, but again, it's only with Cole Anthony out. And then Franz Wagner turned in a pretty solid game. Unfortunately, it was just 36% shooting, but 13-2-1 with 2 steals. He is a must-roster guy. Schofield didn't do too much. Fred Gillespie blocked a shot. That's all he's good for. And Tim Frazier is that deeper league assists streamer. He uh, issued 4 of those out. Well, for the Heat, they did Finally, welcome back Jimmy Butler and his busted up ass. Because he's my butler. <laughs> Didn't shoot well, but 17, 11, four assists and three steals is good. And with Kyle Lowry in the protocols, along with injuries to Adebayo, Deadman, Oladipo, Tucker and Morris, they started a lineup that was Gabe Vincent, the Winter Soldier, Max Struess, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson and Omer Yatsevin. Let's talk about Vincent, 13, 5 and 8. While Lowry's out, there is value for him. But if we do have Tucker coming back next game, that can impact him because it means Struess moves to the bench most likely. And then Struess and Caleb Barton, who returned from COVID protocols, could push into Vincent a little bit. But I still think he's a 12-team streamer. As for Caleb, he had 17 in 29 minutes. Good scoring, good shooting. Um, two threes. Not a real 12-team league guy. The 12-team guy I want is Yurt7. 16 and 15 for him. Missed both his free throws, but 33 minutes, and he's going to have to play big minutes. He's just going to have to get those minutes. He's going to put up strong numbers. He is a 12-team league guy for the next probably three to four weeks, at least until one of Deadman and Bam return. And when Deadman returns, maybe Yurt7 just establishes himself as the starting center. Struess had 13 points in 35 minutes. But again, him playing 35, Martin playing 29. When Tucker is back and when Tyler Hero doesn't get ejected after 19 minutes, those numbers will come down. Struess, he had 13, 2 and 2, which is all right but I wouldn't say that he's a must-roster 12. Well, Duncan Robinson, absolutely jack. What do you reckon? Get that garbage out of here! Yeah, just another shitful night. Six points with two threes. At this point, he's a deeper league, yeah, 14, 16 team league, three-point streamer, and very, very far away from being a must-roster player. But if you're in a situation where you've committed to Duncan Robinson in your fantasy leagues, or you've committed to too many streaming services, maybe you need Trubill. I wonder if you can ask Trubill to get Duncan Robinson off the 87% of fantasy teams that he's on. But if you can't, Trubill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for all the subscriptions that you don't need, that you don't want, and the ones that you simply forgot about. On average, people save up to 720 bucks a year with Trubill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start cancelling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. All right, let's look at the second game. The Philadelphia 76ers, they finally get a big win. It's been a while since they've really pounded a team. Uh, they did it here, 117-96 against the, um, against the Washington Wizards, 117-96. As, yeah, as I said, repeated that. 31 minutes for Joel Embiid, 36-13 with two blocks on 71% shooting. Over the last two weeks, he's the number two ranked player, starting to really find his groove after a bit of a slow start. Well, the thick hogsman, Tobias Harris... Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. 23 and 7 for him. So a, a much better game. Seth Curry, he was dealing with unbelievably high efficiency all season. Like unbelievable stuff. It's fallen off a bit. 29% shooting, but he had 9 assists with 11, uh, 11 points and 3-3. It's not saying to drop him, but we're just seeing some of that shooting drop away. While Tyrese Maxey had 13, 3 and 4. Good for Tangles there to put up those sort of numbers. He does remain a hold. I've had a few people ask me whether he's a drop, and he's not. While Tyler Johnson, Meth Curry, he had five points in 16 minutes, and then not much else going on. Unfortunately, Goldfinger Charlie Bassey only played the six minutes, um, while Furkan Korkmaz has finally had a good shooting night, 14 points in 15 minutes. But not much else to talk about with the sixes. But for the Wizards, they were without Beal and Caldwell Pope. And then before the game, Hal Neto was out due to COVID protocols. They've also got no Rui Hachimura, who continues to be listed available, but they're not playing him as they get his conditioning up. At some point, he's going to play, I assume. Um, we don't know when that'll be. Montrez Harrell was ejected after 18 minutes for you know, squaring up to Embiid. 15 points in those 18 minutes was pretty good. There wasn't much else going on with this team, though. We can look at Denny Avdi, who I think has been pretty good, 113th over the last two weeks, 9-9 nine and nine with two steals. And with Beal and KCP out, there is some value to stream him in, but he's not a high-priority player. While Kuzma had a nice 12-10 and 10 double-double, which is okay, but again, poor efficiency from Kuz. 
He's now 317th over the last two weeks on a per-game basis, has fallen outside the top 120. And I'm telling you now, the return of Rui Hachimura does not make it better for him. He is. I don't think he's a must-roster player. I had this concern before the season started. Then a lot of things fell into place for him to put up okay numbers, but still didn't really grasp them with huge numbers. And I think if you want a roster spot open, you, you can move on. Dinwiddie, 17, 3, and 6 is great on the surface, but again, no steals and a horrendous 3 of 7 from the line hurts overall. But for now, we're holding him while Beal is out, and then we will probably end up dropping him again. But the good thing is, I guess, that he's playing more minutes. So that means that when he was playing those low minutes, it wasn't his knee. It was even being shit house. Something to note. Corey Kispert wasn't as successful in his second start. Eight points on nine shots with not much else. That's why I talked about on the... Um, Waiver Wire show where he was one of the most added players that it didn't make a, uh, a ton of sense to add him because he just isn't that good. And we saw that play out here in this game. All right, the next game, I don't know how much we need to talk about the Cavs shitting on the, the Raptors. 144-99. We're still going to talk about it because there are some interesting things from a fantasy perspective. But the, the Raptors were without Scotland Barnes, Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi, Gary Trent, Precious Achua, Malachi Flynn, Isaac Bonga, Goran Dragic, David Johnson, Kem Birch, and Justin Chapani. That's ridiculous. They started Delano Banton, who was coming out of COVID protocols himself, Sfima Hailuk, Yuta Watanabe, DJ Wilson, DJ Wilson, and Chris Boucher. In terms of guys returning, I reckon Trenner and Siakam might only miss one or two more games. And then you've got Barnes, Achua, Ananobi, and Van Vliet, who are probably two to three games away. So this is all really short-term stuff. What an Abe was great. We talked about him on the pregame show, 26 and 13 with two triples of steal and a block. He's a fine stream for now. DJ Wilson in a 14-team league, I like it. 15 and 8, four steals and a block. Now, the defensive stats are fake, but there's good production there from Deej. Well, interestingly, Chris Boucher played only 28 minutes with all those guys out and him being literally the most experienced player there. He had 21 and 5 with two threes, but shot 32%. He is a rosterable player, but when these guys come back, he won't be. Tremont Waters, six assists and three steals, shot horribly, but he played 35 coming off the bench. He is an interesting, at least deeper format, assists and steals streamer, while Banton had six, three, and six on 25%. Rough night there. And Daniel Aturo played 20 minutes. That's how banged up this team was. Um, Mahaluk, 10, five, and four, two steals and a block. I'd probably prefer him over Waters and over Banton as a 12-team stream ad for the next couple of games. As for the Cavs, they were without Mobley, who could be back next game. Jared Allens, Chetty Osman, Isaac Okoro, who will almost definitely be back next game. Lamar Stevens, Ed Davis, and Dylan Windler. They started Rubio, Garland, Markinen, Wade, and Kevin Love. And Kevin Love continues to have one of the most amazing fantasy seasons we've seen. In just 18 minutes, he had 22 and 9 with six triples. Over the last two weeks, Kevin Love is the 44th ranked player playing 20 minutes a night. He's um, 82nd this season playing 20 minutes a night. How is this happening? He's just been amazing, and he is. I, I can't. I can't believe it, but he's been amazing. He is a must roster player. Garland twenty two four and eight. Denzel the Hammer Valentine had seventeen and nine with five threes and two steals. And while Osman is out, maybe Valentine's a fourteen team streamer. Ravishing Rick had sixteen and six assists and three steals, while Markinen had twenty in twenty two minutes. Now this is the opportunity to try and sell high on Larry Markinen. You're almost not going to have any success at all, but he was trending towards a drop. That's a good game. It's happening while everyone's out. See if you can get a top 100 guy. Don't push it too far. Top 100 will be what you could do. Maybe even throw him and another player in for a top 100. I don't think he's going to remain must roster. While Wade had 17 and 3, it's okay. It's okay for a short-term option. Justin Anderson, 31 minutes. Didn't do enough there. 7, 5, and 4. But he played capable minutes. And uh, Taco Fall blocked two shots in his 11 minutes. And the Cornetto had four points in 13 minutes. That is Luke Cornet, of course. Of course it is. Who else would it be? Um, the fourth game, another blowout. It's going to be a consistent theme here. The Grizzlies pumped the Kings. And the Grizzlies, despite having COVID absences, pumped the Kings because the Kings are shit ass. They are just a disgusting organization at the moment. No offense to Kings fans. I'm sure you know this. Elvin Gentry teeing off on the team. Like just teeing off. There's something wrong there. It's it's, it's not right. The Grizzlies were without Brooks, Melton, and then Culver and Pons, that doesn't really matter. But they started Johnny Concha. He played 28 minutes, 11 and 14, two steals and two blocks. Concha is one of those blokes that whenever you do fantasy translations, you look at his numbers and you go, kids, just another room. You go, what the fuck is going on? What are these numbers? 
and then he plays and you see him play 12 minutes and he goes, oh, I'll have six, six and six with a steal and a block. And you go, oh my God, that's amazing. Will it ever translate? Well, maybe, I guess so, possibly. There you go. There's the numbers. While Brooksy and um, Melton are out, I don't hate taking a flyer on Conch here. Bainey had 28 points in 32 minutes with four threes and two steals, which is nice. And Morant, 18, seven and nine. But the, the Jar Morant problem, the triple zero, zero three, zero steals. That's what's always, or that's what's kept him down in the past. He is now blown out to be the 30th best player this year, which is still good, but 66 since, since he's returned from injury. So we're just watching where he's going to land. 21 and six for Jaron in 26 minutes with two blocks. Shot horribly, 28%, uh, but got to the line 13 times, which is not something that you really see from him at all. Well, I guess you can look at Kyle Anderson, 14 points in 26 minutes. Probably more 14, but there is some 12-team league value. Brandon Clark returned, 14 and 5. They're good numbers in 15 minutes, and that pushed Tillman to a low roll. But we also got 27 minutes from Killian Tilly. I wouldn't expect that as a regular thing, but 27 minutes for Killian Tilly is not something that I would expect to say when other players are playing fewer minutes than that. As for the Kings, they welcome back players. Darren Fox was back. Marvin Bagley was back. Terrence Davis was back. Didn't matter. That was still bad. Torres Halliburton kept playing well, not quite to the same level, but 18, 5, and 7, 3 steals and a block. So maybe a sell-high window remains a little bit open. They started Chemezi Metu, but he played 19 minutes, had 4 and 3. So it was him, Bagley with 10 minutes, Davis with 16. You can drop Metu. Davis scored well, 15 points in 16 minutes. Not good shooting and not much else. I think it's just going to be that fourth or, sorry, fifth starter spot in Sacramento is going to be a mess consistently. I know a lot of you have questions on um, Rishon Holmes. He played 13 minutes. He was 0 points, 0 of 4 shooting with 4 boards. 2 blocks is nice, but 0 of 4 shooting. I have had multiple people ask me whether he is a drop, and therefore he is the biggest buy low that you can find. Please go and buy Rashawn Holmes. I didn't mention that he had 5,000 those 13 minutes. It's not a case of him being benched. He also, and it's one of those, again, triple multipliers that are double multipliers that I talk about. Foul trouble kept the minutes down, and then in those minutes, he played poorly as well. It's like when players get the increased opportunity, then they play more minutes and they shoot 80% from the field and they grab 13 assists with five steals. And you go, holy shit, look at that game. And then it all crashes down and you go, what did I see in this bloke? Well, it's the opposite here. Low minutes shoot a foul trouble and horrible performance in those minutes that make people go, oh, I'm going to drop him. I don't think you should be dropping a bloke that's a 66th ranked player, but he hasn't been good since coming back. So it's the perfect time to go super low on a trade offer for Rashawn Holmes. Um... I don't know what else to talk about with this team. Barnsley had just 12... Oh, actually, I, I did that. I stuffed it up. Let's try again. The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnsley! 12 and 7 with three threes. He has not gotten his form back since returning from injury at all. Well, Damian Jones, 15 and 6 in 27 minutes. I think, instead of persisting with Tristan Thompson and then Alex Lynn when he comes back, I, I just should give Jones the backup minutes. Not saying he's necessarily better than those guys, but there's more of a future in him. I mean, he's flashed a little bit. Keep an eye on him in deeper leagues. They could be getting Mitchell and Len back next game. Um, they won't be renewing Justin Robinson's contract, and they've got guys like Moody A and A.D. Murky who are going to be released soon because their 10 days are going to be up. And they got, at the moment, they don't really have any COVID guys. Like once Mitchell and Len are back, they're free of that COVID outbreak. It's all done. So we'll see how they approach that. But shit else from there. I didn't even talk about Darren Fox, who, um, yeah, not good. 12 points, 0 threes, 5 assists, poor shooting. Didn't look right at all. Um, he's been off nearly all season. He'll be better than this, we, we expect. But just not, not, a, not a good game at all, really, for him or for uh, the Kings, unfortunately for them and for their fans. But if they want something to cheer them up, what are they, you only got a built bill bar, built.com. That's where you can find the best tasting protein bars ever. Maybe they need a change in their strength and conditioning program. They need to get more Built Bars into the locker room because Built Bars is the best tasting protein bar ever. It puts a smile on your face while you're doing something healthy and not many things you can say that about. Low in fat, low in carbs, low in sugar, low in calories, but high in taste and high in protein. Built Bar is that protein bar you've been dreaming of. You wake up in the morning and you're just licking your lips. Go, oh my God, I need a protein bar that tastes great. And then you wake up and you just go, oh, that Aussie dickhead, he talks about this protein bar all the time. I'm going to go to built.com. I'm going to use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and I'm going to buy a box. And I know that he's going to be right because these taste brilliant. So head to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get yourself some boxes of Built Bar. Built Bar is built different. 
Let's take a squeeze at the next game. And guess what? It was a blowout. The undermanned Detroit Pistons lose to the San Antonio Spurs, who were missing their best player in DeJounte Murray. But that doesn't really matter when you are without, as the Pistons were. Just everyone, like 10 blokes, I think were out. No Jeremy Grant, no Cade Cunningham, no Isaiah Stewart, no Kelly Olenek, no Trey Lyles, no Corey Joseph, no Killian Hayes, no Saban Lee, no Rodney Magruder, no Josh Jackson, and then no Isaiah Livers or Chris Smith. So they started a lineup that had Derek Walton Jr. as the starting point guard. Yes, Derek Walton Jr. Starting next to Frank Jackson, Hamadou Diallo, Sadiq Bey, the depressed penis, and Luca Garza. There were some encouraging things. Diallo had 28 points with three steals on 68%. Now, this is one of those things. Big minutes, big usage, tied in with big efficiency, making him look really good. 40 fantasy points. He's not this good. He will not do this. Over the last two weeks, he's the 257th ranked player playing 29 minutes a game. So it's not that he's all of a sudden just got minutes because in those minutes, he did nothing. But usage tying in with high efficiency and high steals makes it look better. Sure, stream him in for 12s with a focus on being a steal streamer but this is a high watermark. Sadiq Bey, a shit ton of shots. 31% on 16 attempts. He got to the line a lot as well. 12 of 14, that's encouraging. And 23 and eight looks good, but that field goal percentage remains rough. Must roster now, sell high if you need to. They played Derek Walton 31 minutes. He had six assists, one steal and two blocks, which is the line looks great. If it wasn't for the 0 of 5 shooting, not the only starting point guard today to, to, to go scoreless. Walton is just a deeper league guy. Well, Frank Jackson did his Jordan Clarkson. 17 points on 19 shots with two rebounds and two assists. And frankly, getting two assists out of Frank Jackson is two more than I expected. They played Jamorco Pickett 18 minutes. And I'm going to be honest with you. I had no idea that they had re-signed Davidus Savitas. Davidus Savitas. Yeah, that's right. I pronounced it right. What am I doing? Uh, I didn't know they re-signed him. I think that they've cut this bloke and re-signed him about four times. Three points in 18 minutes with two steals and a block on 13%. And he is not even close to being an NBA player. Yet, he was out there. Cassius Stanley also added in two steals in his 19 minutes. But on the positive side, the Spurs crushed him. And Keldon Johnson is on a raging hot streak. 27 points on 83%. Of course, with Keldon Johnson, there was no steals and blocks. But encouragingly, he hit threes. And he's hitting threes at a massive level. He's the 60th ranked player over the last two weeks. I think it's a gigantic sell high. Because, again, he's not providing much in the defensive stats or assists. And the three-pointers are way up. His field goal percentage are way up. And that will probably fall off. And you can convince someone to, to trade for him, I'm pretty sure. They just played their starters limited minutes because this was over really early. So, you know, Maximum Derek goes out there, starts a point guard. Maximum Derek. And plays 16 minutes. So don't panic. He's not hurt. Seven points, 10 assists. They just didn't need him. Trey Jones played 21 minutes, had 11 assists. I like Trey Jones. Nice deeper league streamer for assists. We got 15 minutes of Josh Primo. Nine points with three threes. He's looking all right out there. Pirtle played just 15 minutes. Cater Bates Diop started for some reason with DeJounte Murray out. I don't know why. That's one of the... I know they killed him. That's such a... To lose a point guard and you go, all right, I'm going to start my third power forward. So you're running Keldon Johnson, a four at the two. Doug McDermott, a four at the three. And Bates Diop, a four at the four. You could have started Lonnie Walker, Josh Primo, Devin Vassell. Bryn Forbes even. The decision-making was weird. But they won. Doesn't mean it's not weird. Vassell had eight points, but two threes, three steals, and a block. I maintain that he is a hold, while Walker didn't do much there. Uh, eight points in 19 minutes for Lonnie. Hello! But both Lonnie and Vassell can be 12-team streamers. I prioritize Vassell over Walker. Um, deeper leagues, Jock Lando. Man, 18-5, and five, crushing. He has got that backup center role locked down for now. And deeper leagues uh, are going to find some value in him, I think. But don't look at him as 12-teamer or probably even a 14-team league. There is a couple of fluky performances in his last couple of games. But that is, um, yeah, that is, that's an interesting, um, interesting line. Very, very good line, in fact. Not just interesting, very, very good. The next game we take a look at is the New Orleans Pelicans. They got the San Antonio, or not the San Antonio Spurs. They went to the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's what I meant to say. And they lost. The Thunder now won four out of their last five. 117, 112. The Pelicans were without Jonas Valanciunas with a non-COVID illness. Nikhil Alexander-Walker out with COVID. And then um, nine minutes into the game, Brandon Ingram had to leave with Achilles soreness. He went scoreless in that time and had two rebounds and two assists. Uh, well, let's hope he's all right. But he had been trending downwards a little bit. But that meant that more, more time for Josh the Hitman Hart. 38 minutes for Josh, 29 and 10, 
Three steals, a block, and four assists. He's continuing to put up unbelievably good numbers. That's 56 fantasy points. He's a must roster across all formats. While Graham had 15 with eight assists, and Herb Jones, 15 and six, a steal and a block in 37. Herb can be a 12-team league guy if Ingram is out, but he's just on the fences there. Bill Hernan Gomez had 14 and six, had um, some good some good numbers, but it was Jackson Hayes who really impressed in 19 minutes, 15 and six. No, I wouldn't be excited about this for Jackson Hayes or think that there's any 12-team value there because it's just as likely he's completely out of the rotation next game. Garrett Temple, 22-6, and six, a steal two blocks. Excellent game. Took the second most shots on the team. That's ridiculous, and that's possibly why you lost. I am not adding Garrett Temple in 12-team leagues. The 39 fantasy points is awesome, but even if Ingram's out, I will not add Garrett Temple. He just does not need to be on a 12-team league roster. Let's look at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Just great stuff. They have Darius Baisley out, and Trey Mann was pulled during the game for COVID protocols. So they started Aaron Wiggins. 32 minutes for Wigo, 24 and 6. Now, of course, on 80% shooting, it's not real in the slightest. But he looks like he's going to have a rotation role, and deeper leagues need to look at him. They need, need to look at him for sure. Um, Gildas Alexander, 31, 4 and 5, with one steal and three blocks, an excellent game. Well, Josh Giddy had a weird, one of the weirdest games you'll see. Zero points on 0 of 8 shooting, yet he had a double-double. 10 rebounds and 10 assists. He wasn't a particularly good game, but those um, stats are still really useful. Well, Dort is in a uh, is mired in a slump, I would say, at the moment. No, my son is also named Bort. But we also have to remember that his priors tell us he is not a good shooter. So maybe he was just on a hot streak and now he's getting back to normal. 13 points, four steals, 36% shooting. That is taking him out of the top 100, out of the top 110, actually over the course of the season, and that is, you know, it's moving towards droppable. I would still hold for now. Robinson Earl with Baisley out, 15 and 7, good enough to be a 16-teamer, while the Salt Flake, he's back, Theo Maladon, 21 minutes, 12 and 5, two threes and two steals. He stepped up with um, man out. I wouldn't be overreacting at all to that. Well, we got just 10 minutes out of the Moose Mike Mascala and 13 minutes out of favors, and they did jack shit, while Pokyshevsky continues to look I don't know how to best describe it other than saying really bad. All right, let's look at the next one. The Indiana Pacers traveled to take on the Chicago Bulls. They didn't get the win. It was 113-105. No Malcolm Brogdon, no Jeremy Lamb for Indiana. So Karis LeVert at point guard again excelled. 27-4-9, a steal and a block. He is rolling at the moment, really putting up some good numbers after a terrible start. They also got DeMontis Sabonis back, and he just couldn't hit anything. 29%, including 67% from the line. 14, 16, and 5 looks good from a counting stats perspective, as do the two steals. But we know he's been very up and down with his production, but it's great to see Miles Turner string together a couple of big games. 19 and 5, a steal and two blocks. And then Chris Duarte, 16 and 5 with two steals. Now, while Brogdon's dealing with this issue, Duarte is a 12-team league guy. Holiday's more of a 14-teamer. He had 10 points with a bunch of uh, of Richie specials in there as well. Two for two, two, two. Two threes, two rebounds, two assists, and two steals for Juz. Um, with Sabonis back, Brissett went to the bench 6-4 and four in 19 minutes, and Torrey Craig played 22 and had 7 points there. But honestly, that bench, there's not really much happening from a fantasy perspective. For the Bulls, they welcomed back a bunch of guys. Zach Levine was back, Matt Thomas was back, Troy Brown, Ayad Asumnu, um, Devin Dotson returned. A whole bunch of guys returned to action. So now they're just missing Lonzo Ball and Derek Jones dealing with that hamstring injury. That's not true, actually, because Alex Cruz is out with a foot and Tony Bradley entering COVID protocols. But getting most of their stars back. Vooch, I thought, was really pretty good in this game. It's Vooch. It's big Vooch. Vooch is it. Vooch a bitch. He had the traditional Richie Benno. Two for two, two, two. Two threes, two steals, two blocks. Had 16 and 15 as well. Big game for him. While Levine returned with 32 points in 33 minutes. And Javante Green also chimed in with 13 points. Only took four shots. Hit all of them. But that's a really good line. Javante's still only a deeper league player. Well, DeRozan. DeRozan, it looks great. 24, three, and three, two steals. A lot of shot attempts. Bit down on his free throws. But looking at the box score, it's one of those games like his Toronto days where he's the team wins. He puts up good numbers, but somehow he was a minus 13 while all of the other starters were positives. And I don't know why that happened to him. That's the thing that's always plagued him in the past. He's got these horrible on-off numbers, yet good counting stats. That hasn't been the case for him this year until this game. But the free throw is well down there, which has been a large fueler of his success. Kobe White in a start was shocking. Eight points, two rebounds, one assist, didn't hit a three. He is still a stream option with Caruso and Ball out, but he's not a long-term guy really in the slider. So I wouldn't be bothered getting overly excited about that. 
Not much else there. Dasumnu had six points in 23 minutes. Obviously, just a deeper league player. Troy Brown, five in, in 19. And Matt Thomas played 19 minutes as well. Matt Thomas was all right. I thought he was pretty solid. But for a fantasy point of view, not much to really write home about there from old Matty. So let's go to the last game of the night. The Denver Nuggets with a huge comeback win. Uh, get over the line against the Clippers. 103-100 on the back of Big Chungus. Nikola Jokic. Big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus. Big, big. big numbers, 26, 21, and 8. Two steals, three blocks. Inefficient, 38% shooting, but 7 of 7 from the line. Hit some key shots late, key free throws late. Interesting, though, he was, again. Um, normally, it's, it's him doing everything, and then the bench comes in and it falls apart. It was the opposite in this game. When he was in there, the lineups were sucking. Like, they looked bad until the end of the game, and then the bench was carrying them. So, a little bit of a change in fortunes there for the Nuggets. Faku Kumpaso got into some foul trouble, so he only played 17 minutes, but that meant that Davon Reed stepped up. 15 points on 8 shots in 26 minutes for Reed. I wouldn't look too much, I wouldn't read too much in it, an unintentional pun. Um, and he probably won't be back as his 10-day uh, expires, but good, good numbers. Austin Rivers started with Aaron Gordon out. 12 points, 4 threes, and 4 assists. Only a deeper league guy. While Farton Will Barton, a little bit better of a game. He's been struggling lately. Barton outside the top 250 last two weeks. 17, 4, and 3 with two steals. Morris had 12, 5, and 5, which is all right. Jeff Green didn't do too much. Four points in his 20 minutes. While Vleko Chancha, who started last game without Aaron Gordon, he did not do anything. Just the four points in his 20 minutes. For the Clippers, trying to work out how they're going to deal without Paul George. No Reggie Jackson. Eric Bledsoe, must roster. 18, 2, and 10, 5 steals, 2 blocks. Must roster player for now. Terrence Mann, I think you've got to add. 11, 7, and 8 in 36 minutes. I still think Luke Kennard's an option. Now, he only played 17 minutes, so you look at that and go, what's going on? Foul trouble. He had 5 fouls. That kept his minutes way down. He hit a key 3 late, but 8 points and 2 triples. Now, I probably have Bledsoe and Mann marginally ahead of Kennard, but that could easily switch, and it's going to be a bit of a coin flip for these guys. BJ Boston was great, 33 minutes, but he did get the boost in this game because of Canard's foul trouble. 18 points for Boston with two triples. Uh, took 14 shots. Really, really high shot numbers. Nice deeper league ad. I wouldn't look at him as a 12-teamer. Zubat 17-11 with three blocks, while Isaiah Hartenstein doesn't have a timetable to return. So I think we can drop him if you are dealing with other injuries. Abaka had 10-6 and six in his 19 minutes, and Amir Coffey played 23 minutes uh, for 9-9. Nine and I nine. Um, don't think there's much more there. Yeah, Keon Johnson, 11, 11 minutes. But it really is Bledsoe, man. Then we go down to Canard, and then deeper formats, we look at BJ Boston as the ad. Ads with Paul George out. The lines of the night, the monstrous line of the night, Joel Embiid narrowly pips Big Chungus Nikola Jokic. Your waiver wire is Johnny Concha, who's got some value. Tyrese Halliburton is the young gun, and then his teammate is the dud of the night. I, tell a man's not hot. I feel like Buddy Heald's got that award so many times over the years. Let's look at the top players for nine category leagues today. Uh, Joel Embiid at number one. Jokic actually was at two instead of Josh Hart. Hart's at three. Vooch at four. Levine at 5, Halliburton at 6, Kevin Love at 7, Levert at 8, Keldon Johnson at 9, and John Conchar at 10. Your guys who are available in 50% of formats, we're looking at Conchar, good 12-team option, at least streaming. Watanabe is similar. DJ Wilson as more of a 14-team league guy. The Hammer Denzel Valentine, a bit deeper there. Garrett Temple, a bit deeper. Aaron Wiggins, deeper league guy. Jock Landau, nice deep league ad. Damian Jones, eh, don't know what they're going to do with him when Len returns, but he's interesting at least. Diallo's got some 12-team stream ability. And then uh, Teo Maladon, uh, not someone I'm particularly interested in. And then we look at your top performers in points leagues. It's Jokic, Embiid, Hart, Gildas Alexander, Bledsoe, Levert, Vooch, Sabonis, and Johnny Concha. That will do it for today's show, guys. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to check out the Locked On Bets podcast as well, all of your betting action over there. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.